2023 was definitely an interesting year for movies. Large million dollar blockbusters flopped, and small films that came out of nowhere turned out to be some of the most successful of the year. So today I'll be ranking each 2023 movie I saw in a tier list. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your own list in the comments. And with that said, let's get started. Now just before we start, I've obviously not seen each new release this year. I mainly watch movies that I had an interest in, so if there are some missing that you think are good, let me know down in the comments. Also just due to work, I didn't have the most time to watch new releases that came out in the last few months, so there are some I probably would have seen like the Marvels, Godzilla Minus One and Aquaman 2. So those are unfortunately not on this list. The tiers I'll be using are bad tier, average tier, enjoyable tier, great tier and favorite tier. Not best tier, so it won't be for the objectively best movies, only the ones I like the most. The movies are arranged in order of release, so with that said, let's begin. First up we have Yan E, now this is a Netflix original sci-fi film that was released all the way back in January. And just due to January being a very quiet month in terms of new releases, this was the only film I saw. And overall, it was really forgettable and mediocre. It has so many plot points that we have all seen many times. Obviously a lot of inspiration was taken from the Terminator and other similar films and it just doesn't do anything you need to stand out. The budget was definitely pretty big as this movie is very good looking but it just doesn't have much to it so bad tier. The second movie I've seen this year is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. The first movie of Phase 5 of the MCU definitely wasn't the best starting point. Where I do think the word best was giving the saga a tiny bit more forward momentum as the main villain was introduced who I thought was great. Too bad he didn't appear to be as powerful as he should have been, as it only took a few ants to defeat him. Are you serious? Due to the cast, I still found this movie very entertaining. Modoc was a scene stealer, and it was cool to explore the quantum realm and expand the MCU mythology. But ultimately, the movie felt so skippable and really pretty pointless, as it ended exactly where it began. But it is still going in enjoyable tier for me, because I do still enjoy this franchise quite a bit. Then we have Creed 3. Now the Rocky franchise is one of my favorite film series out there and I think this is another welcome addition. Due to Rocky not actually being in it, I don't think it's as good as the other Creed movies but this is still a very good movie. This one might have the best villain in the franchise and it also continued Creed's story very well. The fights were also very unique with a bigger focus placed on style making them very different to others we have seen. So this movie is going in great tier. Then we have 65. Looking at the premise, this movie should have been so much more entertaining than it ended up being. Like there were so many odd choices made here. Why is Adam Driver an alien that looks like a human? Why did he get teamed up with someone who can't speak English? Why does it even matter that he got sent to Earth if he's an alien and doesn't even know what dinosaurs are? Why is it so bland and why is there no entertainment here whatsoever? Like all the ingredients for a fun dinosaur survival movie are all there, a great lead actor, beautiful visuals, great CGI, but no, instead we get an extremely bland and lifeless film. So it's growing in bad tier. Then we have John Wick 4. Speaking of bland and lifeless movies, this is definitely not one of them. I mean this movie is so good at being one specific thing and that is cool. From the stylized action to the fantastic cinematography, the latest John Wick film shows us that this is one of the best action franchises out there with not a single bad movie. Obviously Keanu Reeves is so fun to watch in the role and he fully commits to all these wild and crazy fight scenes that are executed perfectly. The whole cast is great too, as every single side character is so memorable, Donnie Yen being a standout. What it also nailed was the emotions as it sort of closed off John Wick's story on a really great note. But apparently a fifth film could be happening and if it does I probably won't like this one as much as I do because it is such a great send off to the character. And I really don't know what else they can do at this point. I just think the movie was a bit too long, but it's still growing in great tier. Then we have the Mario movie. Now I've not grown up with any Nintendo or Mario games, so as someone whose knowledge of the IP is pretty limited, I found this movie super generic. I think it's still a fun enough family film, but that's all it is. The plot is so simple it's kind of boring, and I could kind of guess the ending by the start of the movie, it's super predictable. The voice cast is great though, and the animation is good looking, but nowhere near some of the other animated movies that came out this year. So it's the first movie in average tier. Up next we have The Covenant. This movie seems to be really underrated as I hardly hear anyone talk about it. While it does well and different compared to other war films, it's not focused on the war itself. Instead it's all about these two characters and their bond. Jake Gyllenhaal is one of my favorite actors so I always love seeing him in films and the other lead actor was great too. What this movie also nails are the tense moments and once you reach the end it feels very victorious and there's also so many moments of strong emotions. So I'm putting it in great tier. If you haven't seen it be sure to check it out. 
Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy 3. After a not so great run of MCU films, this movie is exactly what the franchise needed, as it feels like good old classic Marvel. This film is just such a satisfying send off to the Guardians that has so many strong emotions and tragedy, while also having so many victorious moments too. It is just so wild that every single problem the recent MCU film suffered from, this movie does well. It perfectly balances humor, never going too silly, it respects all these characters and closes out each of these stories really well. It has a great villain that you can't wait to see defeated, and of course the CGI is fantastic. This is what I wish more Marvel movies would be. And my excitement for the MCU after this movie was so high, then Secret Invasion obviously released which plummeted my excitement to the ground. But this is easily one of the best movies of the year, so it's going in favorite tier. That brings us to Fast 8. Now the Fast and Furious franchise is definitely a fun set of films, but not really a great set of films. They at least know what they are, they are just supposed to be enjoyable rides, and that is what this one is. It also improves upon the previous one a tiny bit, as it isn't totally unrealistic like cars flying in space. The action scenes are also all fun and enjoyable, but this movie also shows how this franchise made the same mistake over and over again. As for the third time now, maybe even more, a dead character returns. It is just so lazy and really means nothing has any weight to it, but it's still going in enjoyable tier, just behind Ant-Man. That brings us to Across the Spider-Verse. As of right now, this is the best animated movie I've ever seen, mainly because Spider-Man is my favorite character of all time. And this movie is such a great tribute to that character. And obviously the animation itself is phenomenal. The way different art styles are combined, as well as all the many details found in each frame, really make this movie a work of art. It is also such a great example of what the MCU's multiverse saga should have been, as it uses the concept of the multiverse in so many fun and creative ways. Then onto the plot itself, it is obviously great, as it continues and dives into these character stories more. It is funny, has strong emotions, and a fantastic music score. So it is going to the top of favorite tier, and it won't be topped. Then we have Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Point of reference, I'm not really a Transformers fan at all. I don't care for the characters, I haven't seen all the films, and I find the plots pretty boring for the most part. Which is what kind of made this movie one of the year's biggest surprises. As I found it to be a lot of fun. I don't think it's fantastic, and it definitely isn't great, but I did what it was meant to do. Just be entertaining. I thought the new characters were much more interesting than the Michael Bay characters, and the plot was also much more focused. I don't think the action scenes were as good as the previous films, but it all worked together nicely enough. So for a movie I was expecting to dislike quite a bit, it exceeded my expectations and ended up at the top of enjoyable tier. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Up next we have Elemental. It is really quite unfortunate knowing that this movie comes from the same studio that did some of the best animated movies of all time. As by this point, it really feels like the Pixar magic is gone. I found this to be quite a mediocre film, by Pixar standards at least. These movies are always known for their fun and creative concepts, whether that being toys coming to life or a rat learning to cook. And in this movie, the main creative selling point is a city with living elements, which is honestly not a very interesting idea. And it's also such a weird idea, but not a very clever one. Then the plot is just basically Zootopia, but with elements this time. This movie was a big disappointment, but at least the animation was pretty, and it still had some enjoyable enough moments, so it's still going in enjoyable tier. Then we have The Flash, probably the most disappointing movie of the year, because it was so insanely overhyped long before its release. Many claimed it to be one of the best superhero movies of all time, and the end product was definitely not. This movie suffers from so many issues. Firstly, the humor is so extremely childish and annoying. I find this version of Barry to be pretty annoying, and when you get two of them, and one is meant to be more immature and annoying, it really ruins the whole experience. Secondly, the plot doesn't make a lot of sense. Especially the ending. The whole point of the movie was for Barry to learn that he shouldn't mess with the timeline and change stuff. And by the end, after he saw the terrible consequences, he changes stuff again in any case. What was the point of the whole movie then? Thirdly, this movie tries doing No Way Home by featuring all these cameos, but ultimately fails because it features all these niche cameos that really no one my age would know. Not even I knew who the final cameo was until afterwards. Some of the time travel stuff where they did alternate Man of Steel was pretty cool at least, so it isn't going all the way down in bad tier. But it is definitely average tier. Oh yeah, and I forgot the CGI is terrible too. Up next is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This is a frustrating one because while it is nice seeing Harrison Ford back as Indiana Jones, it's just a concept that doesn't work with an 80 year old actor. This means all of the action scenes are just so limiting and there's really no believability that he can constantly escape all these enemies. 
What does it work so well in the previous movies are the real stunts, and obviously all of that has to be removed here. Making Indiana Jones a deconstructed hero is also not a great idea. But at the same time, this movie also has some enjoyable moments and a fantastic opening scene, where you get some classic Indiana Jones action. That sequence is great, the rest of the movie is kind of forgettable, and the side characters were annoying too, but the ending was so wild it was kind of fun. So enjoyable tier. Then we have Sound of Freedom, a movie no one expected would end up being one of the highest grossing movies of the year. It also turned out to be a super controversial movie, some claiming it to be propaganda, others claiming it to be one of the best movies of the year. And as for me, someone who watches a movie for what it is meant to be, a movie, I thought it did its job well. And I'm not really sure why politics needs to be brought into every conversation. This movie does a fantastic job at showing the horrors of trafficking, that was its job and that is what it accomplished, so I'll put it in great tier. Then we have Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Now this is my favorite action franchise of all time, and one that gets better by basically every entry, except the second film. And here that is the case once again, this is the best Mission Impossible movie, and one of my favorite action movies I've ever seen. Tom Cruise fully commits once again to some wild and crazy stunts that are awesome to see. Then it does something new in the franchise as the characters go up against AI which creates some interesting scenarios and a much more complex threat. Really everything about this movie is great, the characters, the humor, the action and the plot, easily favorite tier. Then we have Oppenheimer, so Christopher Nolan is my favorite director of all time and this was his first movie I got to see in the cinema. And obviously this is a very well made movie with a phenomenal cast and some top tier acting. So for most of you this will probably be your favorite movie of the year. Wouldn't say that for myself however but it's still very good. In general I'm not really a fan of these slower biographical films but this movie took subject matter I wasn't that interested in and really intrigued me. I especially love some of the court case scenes at the end, then on a technical level it is great. The cinematography, practical effects and music are all fantastic. On that note, one issue I did have with it is that it almost feels like the main explosion scene could have been a bit better with CGI. From it's definitely really impressive that this was all done without it, but looking at the real footage and the one in the movie, it ended up looking a bit underwhelming. But this movie obviously gets extra points by doing the impossible, making Robert Downey Jr. unlikable. So great tier just beyond John Wick, as I find that one a bit more rewatchable. That brings us to Barbie. That was the main question for this here, wasn't it? Barbie or Oppenheimer? And I chose Oppenheimer. This movie wasn't really my thing, and I did not feel like the target audience. It is definitely a super entertaining movie. And just like Oppenheimer, the cast is fantastic. And on a technical level, the set design and aesthetic is all very cool and unique looking. But this movie gets so unbelievably preachy near the end, and it goes so hard on its themes. That was definitely its main issue, and it could have been more subtle. Still enjoyable tier for me, so Ghost Behind Ant-Man, is it a better movie than Ant-Man? Yes, but I enjoy the MCU more. Speaking of movies I didn't enjoy as much as everyone else, up next we have Mutant Mayhem. Now I'm not a fan of this franchise at all, and maybe saw one of the movies when I was a kid but nothing else. But I heard some positive buzz surrounding this film so I checked it out. Firstly the animation is fantastic which is already a bit positive. Then secondly, I found all the characters entertaining and some of the humor really worked. But one of this movie's biggest issues was the majority of the comedy that didn't work. It relied way too much on other movie references to be funny, as well as way too much gross out humor from cockroach ladies to vomiting. Then it just plays that over and over again until it's nauseating. The way the final battle was visualized was also a really odd choice, and in general I found the plot forgettable. Still had a fun enough time, so enjoyable to hear. Then we have The Meg 2, easily one of the worst movies of the year, as it's literally a beat for beat rehash of the first movie. Just with a few more Megalodons. The humor didn't work, the plot was forgettable, and there was nothing that made me care for any of the characters at all. Bad tier. Next up we have Heart of Stone. On the topic of bad movies, this is the worst movie I saw all here. I've got a bad feeling about this. It is a Netflix original spy movie that is just so generic. It's basically just James Bond but with a woman, but not nearly as entertaining or exciting as a James Bond movie. This never happened to the other fella. The plot was forgettable, the action was forgettable, the characters were forgettable, it really just feels like something put out there to fill a spot on Netflix. The movie also very clearly had a decent budget, but it feels like all that money was thrown into large CGI action scenes rather than a compelling script. Then we have Blue Beetle. Now I've pretty much had enough of the DCEU by this point. 
But this movie, which I didn't have any excitement for, definitely ended up being much better than The Flash. The trailer for this movie made it look so boring and mediocre, and while it definitely didn't end up being anything super unique, I still found it fun and enjoyable enough. It is predictable though, but it's still going near the top of enjoyable tier. Then we have Gran Turismo, just a good old classic feel good movie, that really ended up being a lot better than I expected. It is of course an underdog story, so it can be inspirational. And what made this art story even better is that it was based off real life events, so it made the movie even more interesting. Then because it revolves around the video game, there are so many moments where things are visualized in really cool ways, and the races themselves are shot very well. Now I do think it is a bit similar to Ford vs Ferrari, as it revolves around the same racetrack. So it doesn't feel entirely fresh and Ford vs Ferrari definitely did it better, but it is still going in great tier. But lower down as it's not on the same level as some of the other great films, but I still found it very good. Then we have The Creator, an original sci-fi film that really made me wish we got more movies like this. Now it is one that I liked a bit more back when I saw it. Thinking about it now, the plot was a bit forgettable, but overall I thought it was a solid film. The best thing about it was probably how good it looked, as well as all the rich world building. All the ideas that explored about AI were definitely interesting too, and it's ideas that could be pretty relevant soon. The ending was a bit rushed, but it's still going in great tier for me. Then we have Killers of the Flower Moon. Now obviously Barbie vs Oppenheimer was a big deal this year, but the even more interesting question is Oppenheimer or Flower Moon. They are both slow historical films based off real life events, with great performances and directed by world famous directors. And they also feature stunning cinematography and end with court cases. And honestly, while Christopher Nolan is my favorite director, I like Killers of the Flower Moon a little bit more. I found the subject matter very fascinating, as it wasn't something I was aware about at all. This movie is also so well made, and the plot, while it is slow, is really interesting from beginning to end. This movie is so big and epic in scale, as it spans so many years and features so many layers, because it is such a complex story of all of these manipulations and murders. Maybe it's just recency bias as it's one of the last movies I saw this year, but it's growing in great tier, one placement above Oppenheimer, but honestly they could have both been tied. The second last movie on the list is The Hungry Games Ballad of Songbirds. This franchise is one of the few that really doesn't have a single bad movie, and the latest film still shows that that is the case. What it does best is add so much more lies to the other movies, as well as give this world so much history, as everything is given such a cool retro vibe. Then it obviously has all the games too that we come to these movies for, but its strong point is definitely the character arc of Snow, as this movie shows his downward spiral into becoming the villain we all know. The whole cast and the soundtrack was great too. So is this movie objectively one of the best of the year? Probably not, but it was one of my favorites. I love this franchise and it was great returning to this world one final time, so it's growing in favorite tier. Then lastly we have Rebel Moon, another movie that, like so many of the previous films I spoke of, is fantastic on a technical level, but absolutely fails on a story and character level. The action scenes, world building and visuals of this movie are really good, but the plot is so boring. It's one we have seen so many times, and of course it is very clear this movie was inspired by Star Wars. But it feels more like just a bland Star Wars rehash than a movie influenced by it. Then the plot and the way it was structured is so odd. There are way too many exposition scenes, and the majority of the runtime is about the lead character recruiting fighters. Then during the final battle, those fighters play no part whatsoever, which means half of the runtime was a waste of time. On the note of wasting time, there are so many side quests and plots that are so pointless to the main story, so unfortunately we end this list off on a bad tier film. Top of bad tier though, because exploring all of these planets was kind of cool, but still one of the worst of the year. And there we have it, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.